Well, hey everybody, it's 3 p.m. We've got the family here doing their thing and I am doing mine. It's 3 p.m. You're breaking bread with Nanny Bubby, no pun intended, because we are working with bread today. I'm Nanny Bubby and welcome to my kitchen. I'm so happy to be here. I've been traveling across the country and I made my way to North Carolina, which is someplace I've never really spent much time, Asheville, North Carolina, actually. I was at a wonderful women's retreat and I really have to say, in hindsight, I really connected to the indigenous lands that were, or that North, North Carolina was once an indigenous land, as I, I'm sure our whole country was, but whatever those tribes were, there was a deep connection that I felt with them while being there, and it was really an incredible experience, that amongst many others. But I'm back in Las Vegas, and I'm cooking up a storm. I made, let me show you this, I made lemon, ricotta cookies right here when I return. Now, I'm not a baker, so you're probably surprised to see that I made these cookies, but I had a dear friend. Let me show you a close-up of these cookies. There you go. I uh, made these cookies for a dear friend whose birthday was yesterday, who I thought I was not going to be able to make them for her because I was traveling unexpectedly, but I did, and she loved them. They were delicious. They're Giada's lemon ricotta cookies, and you can find that recipe on um, Food Network, I suppose. I followed it to a T, and it ended up beautifully, so I'm um, going to share them with my grandchildren when they come back. So now, let's talk about what we're doing today. We are talking about breakfast for dinner. You know, I'm big on Thursday night should always be breakfast for dinner, and why not? Why not? So uh, if you're preparing for a family, you know, you're a mom, you're a dad, or whatever position that you hold, grandparent who maybe does all the cooking, I don't know. Everybody has different roles today. Um, so not to include or exclude anybody. But um, why do I have to say that? But anyway, um, but here's, here's my advice. Number one, you really only have to prepare and prep. On a Sunday, you're shopping for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights because Thursday night is always breakfast for dinner. And the great thing about breakfast for dinner is that it signals the end of a week. Now, the only thing that signals the end of a week more than Thursday night being breakfast for dinner is that Friday is always test day, right? Spelling test, math test, whatever, Friday's that day. And there's some anxiety that your children may or may not have leading into that Friday. And so if when they get out of the car in the morning on their way to school, you say, don't forget, it's breakfast for dinner tonight. There's just a, a feeling that comes over them that they don't have to, you know, that they get to come home and it gets to be their choice. So let's say you have three children. Here's how the prepping works. Give them a recipe book, give each of them something that you want to cook out of, and you say to each one of them, you get to pick one night for dinner and I'll make it. And so they're not only responsible for picking what they want to eat, but over the weekend, they're gonna intergenerational cook with you, whoever you are, and they are gonna prep with you just the items that come with the meal that they picked out, or not. But that's what I feel is really wonderful. They get a chance to feel the food, to understand the food, to smell the food. It's not something that just, you know, they put that ends up in front of them. You put it in plastic bags, put their name on it, and Monday night is Johnny, Tuesday night is Jason, and Wednesday night is April. And each one of your three children, if you have one child, then it's you, you the, your husband, and the child. If you have two children, then it's one of them and the husband. I mean, mix it up any way you want. But at the end of the day, Thursday is breakfast for dinner. And when they pile on that car, in that car on Thursday, what are you going to talk about? Not spell the words back to me while we're driving, but you're going to say, hey, it's breakfast for dinner tonight. What do you want to eat? So, um, and they get to choose. So let me tell you, there we go. I want to see who's here. So you'll forgive me for looking off. Um, it does tell me, and there's two comments. Let me see who these comments are from. Uh, you know, the, I can do, there we go. Judy Woods is here. Hey, Judy, so nice to have you. Larissa is here. 
Um, David is here. David Lerner. Oh, David Lerner, I have to talk about you, so hold on just a minute. Um, and uh, I'm really excited. So let me, would you all give a round of applause, please, to David Lerner, who today helped me update the updates that came down for my uh, the program that I use when switching cameras and running media and video, and he helped fix the bugs that were in the system with the update, and I am so grateful to David Lerner, so there we go, there you go. Hi, Judy, thanks a lot, and Larissa, you're the best. Thank you for being here. So this is what I'm doing for breakfast for dinner, so it's great. You always have pancake mix on hand, you always have eggs, maybe you have bacon or turkey bacon, maybe the kids want waffles, maybe the kids want shakshuka, it just depends how evolved they are in their eating journey. But I'm gonna show you something I used to make for my children, both really mostly for you know Saturday morning or Sunday morning breakfast, but I'll tell you, it's a great item to make breakfast for dinner as well. So let's go, let's go deep into the, the tight shots. Here I am in your upper right-hand corner. Everything's working perfectly, David. And we're gonna take these two pieces of bread and I'm gonna show you two different ways to actually make what I call a one-eyed pirate. So I brought two of these to cut a hole, if you can see this, right in the middle of the bread. So let's, this piece of bread is bigger. So I'm gonna see if I can cut into there. Mm. Let's see. Ah, oh, yes, that was great. Doesn't have to be perfect. There you go. Let's see. Um, David says you're very welcome. Lisa Sigmund Sitko is here. Hey, Lisa. Um, Larissa is here. So there we go. Okay, so you can see right there, there is a hole. And then I'm going to, I think that's a little big, but I'm going to go ahead and just, we'll see what works out better, right? So I think smaller is better because smaller is a lot bigger than you think. And I think the smaller hole is easier to work with. So there you go. This is a little bigger than I would like, but let's see what, oh, Lisa says hi, that's so cool. I just wanna make sure I'm not missing anybody. And David says you're entirely welcome. He was genius in all of this, switching back to cameras, which he loves. So, um, so what I'm going to do is this, I'm gonna grab um, my who is watching uh, little iPhone stand here, I'm going to Move it behind me here. There we go. Hello, everybody. I am back here, so there we go. Let, let me get you guys here so I can talk to you while I am on. And I'm going to take these pieces of bread and move them over here. So pardon my back, just a moment. And here's one, and here is two. And that hole was so big on this piece of bread, it actually fell apart but the egg will help it to stick together. So this is what we're gonna do. The first thing we're gonna do is, <laughs> you know, my kitchen is brand new and I haven't actually memorized the burners yet. So sometimes like I use this burner all the time because I know exactly where it is, uh, where the turnstile is, but um, any other burner I get a little confused about. Okay, we're gonna turn this down to like about a medium high heat and I always wanna remind you, let's see, uh, Mary is here, Mary Campbell. Hey Mary, nice to see you, thank you for being here. Gosh, we've got so many people joining us today, that makes me so happy. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that this gets nice and hot. I have to, because this is a La Creuset pot, the handle gets very hot, so I do need a, um, pot holder, so let me grab that. Okay, we'll put this right here. All right, so first thing that we're gonna do is this is warming up, let me turn it down because I don't want the butter to burn either, but always put your butter in a hot pan or any oils. And the reason you do, it brings them down to, either the oil begins to shimmer much more quickly. Just remember when you heat fats to a really high heat, they can become somewhat what people describe as toxic. Now. Um, avocado oil you can go up to 500 degrees with, but you know, the oils that I like to use, avocado is one if I really do need a high, high heat, but olive oil, butter, and coconut oil, and that's it for oils. Just reminding you that all of the other seed oils like canola, hey Georgia, nice to see you, so happy you're here. Georgia's my new friend I met this weekend in North Carolina, and she's already like, 
right up here in my heart. It's so great. So nice to see you. You found me. Thanks, Georgia. Okay, so back to the oils. No grapeseed oil, no um, safflower, sunflower, and canola. And I always say this. Do you know what a canola is? Have you ever seen a canola grow? Have you ever eaten a canola? No. And what does that tell you? It tells you that whatever that oil is, there's more chemicals in it than there is something that is good for your heart, your body, and certainly your soul. So, and you say, oh, it's too expensive. It's a deep frying avocado oil. I'm just gonna tell you, what are you doing deep frying in the first place? I mean, seriously. So the few times you deep fry, why not use avocado oil or just don't do it? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I don't know if Georgia, I don't know if you got to see what I did in terms of cutting the hole in the bread, but um, you were the last one here, it seems. The first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to show you the first technique, which is to make French toast and then make the one-eyed pirate in the French toast. So there we go. We're just gonna mix that up really quickly in this bowl and I think I'm going to put a pat of butter in to start now and this will start getting nice and hot. We're going to um, pop this bread in before it starts to burn. We'll turn up the heat just a little bit. There we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, so there we go. We're going to soak that. Now again, this piece actually did fall apart. There we go. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, that's my watch talking to me. How funny is that? Okay. Siri, cancel. <laughs> All right. Let's get this in. And okay, there we go. Okay, now this is how we're going to work. We're going to take this, which is normally French toast, no milk in this, all egg. It did fall apart, but we're going to hold it together with the egg. It, it'll stay stuck. And we're going to take an egg and we are going to crack this egg. Again, I hope you heard me talk about breakfast for dinner. This is one of those things you can make along with some turkey, um, bacon, or something of that nature. And we're gonna take this and crack this egg right into the middle of that hole. And I'm gonna turn up this heat because at this point we really want it to be nice and hot. Now, the next one that we're gonna do is not going to be with um, the egg as like a French toast. But what we're going to do, I gotta turn that up or we're gonna be here all day. Um, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put butter like you would for um, uh, grilled cheese, right? You sort of butter the outside so it gets nice and caramelized, that butter. I mean, the kids, nothing. Listen, I always say spread love like butter. Nothing makes a children's eyes light up more than the taste of butter. And don't you dare burn, uh, blame butter for what canola oil has done to the human body, okay? I'm just warning you. All right, here we go. So I got a lot of opinions. If you guys notice, but I only want what's best for everybody and... You know, intergenerational cooking has not really transpired in, in these recent generations, which makes me so sad. But um, anyway, here we go. So I'm going to take this egg now. Do you see this? I'm just going to show you. I'm going to pop that egg here right in the middle. So that should have been a bigger hole in this piece of bread because part of that egg sort of spilled out. But you know what? It gets corrected, so not to worry about it. So let me wipe my hands here. Hold on. Here we go. Okay. So we're going to let this cook, and I am going to say to everybody something very profound, for which I have no idea what that is. So while this is cooking, I actually do. So I'm going to show David how the new uh, camera system is working so well. So I'm going to leave you right here. Uh, good. Georgia said she's for the butter, too. I love that, Georgia. I knew we had more in common than just what we thought. The fact that she loves butter, that's all about it. Okay, let's pop over here just one minute because let me turn this down. I don't want it to, to burn, but I do want to talk to you just really quickly just for purposes of David being able to see that the system works really good. So, you know, I have an ebook called The uh, Happy Kitchen. You can find it. It's $5.99 or $7.99, sorry. <laughs> it's $7.99 
Happy Kitchen, Nanny Bubby, www.nannybubby.com slash happy kitchen. This is the front cover, Happy Kitchen. David, are you in love with how this is working? I mean, I'm doing this really for David to see that we are all good. And then, um, so you can go there. And honestly, if you go to the shop, um, which is right here, as you can see, the affirmation cards are for sale, the apron is for sale, the spatula is, and the shop is open, so it's nannybubby.com slash shop. And David, everything is working like a dream, as you can see, and I'm so happy. Thank you so much. So we're going to run back over to camera three over here. We're, we're just giving David a tour of his hard work today, and I'm so grateful. Okay, so we are just going to do nothing more than flip these the way that you would flip anything else, you know, when you're making French toast or fried eggs. I think I could use a little more butter, actually, here. But let's see, we're going to flip this. There we go. And that's it. And I will tell you, when I used to wake up and, and, you know, or when I didn't, but when my kids used to wake up and I would tell them, hey, we're making one-eyed pirates, or I'd say, what do you want? And they'd say, one-eyed pirates. It, it like was the start of the best morning. So can you imagine if you introduce one-eyed pirates, let's see, David Lerner says he likes better too. There you go, David. Good job. Okay. Um, and Judy Woods, yes for butter, me too. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. It's time to bring back butter. Butter, right? Butter, there's nothing better than, oh my God, like butter. It's so incredible, and it's real. And you know, the, the grass-fed butters are just over the top. I love the Kerrygold, it's Irish butter. And um, so I love that I am on Facebook, and I can talk about brands that I love because there's not a sponsor that, you know, at the TV station that says, oh no, you can't say that because it interferes with, with our sponsor and you can't be honest. So I really love the Facebook venue because of that. So anyway, um, I digress, I'm sorry, all the time with me, right? Um, anyway, so here's the thing. Introduce the One-Eyed Pirate, and it's just a fabulous option because it, it's laughable, you know, on your way to school on Thursday morning. So who wants One-Eyed Pirates for dinner? And it just, everybody laughs. Or you could even say, who wants One-Eyed Pirates for dinner? And if you know they love eggs and bread, and if you know you, they love French toast, then, you know, you've got a whole new item. So uh, write me. Tell me all about it. Let me know how it goes. I love you to pieces. Let me pick this up because this La Crusade is very hot. I always forget about that, and sometimes I forget to get my mitts. But I do not have a top, sh uh, a close-up camera on this angle. So Barbara is here. Hey, Barbara Kirsch. Oh, my God, I love Barbara Kirsch. So happy to see you. Hope you've been having a really great um, time since COVID. I haven't seen you since there, but there you go. You can see it. So this one is the French toast right here, and this one is just regular. The bread that I used on this was actually here. I'm just going to change shots and come over to this side right here. I need something for that. I need a hot pad. There we go. Okay. So let me show you this. Um, you know, it's like when I did my TV show back in the day, you could never have imagined switching cameras and cooking and being on camera and talking and staying up with it all. But honestly, the system is just so easy. So there is a beautiful tight shot um, of what it looks like. Let me grab a plate really quick and let me show you just how fabulous it looks. Plated. Um, also, the fact that I have a microphone is even more fabulous so I can actually walk away and um, keep you connected. So let's see. Here we go. <laughs> There's one. How do you like that? There you go. I remember what I was going to tell you. The bread that I used on this is brioche. It's a brioche. It's from Trader Joe's. Um, and it's really fabulous. The same loaf at Whole Foods is $9, and I guess this is, or $7, something like that, and I guess this is from Trader Joe's, a Trader Joe's price, if um, you're looking and it's just as good. Um, 
you always want to take it out while the yolk is really nice and runny because you know what that's like, especially in this bread, because this bread was grilled in the butter like grilled cheese. Um, and so, and this, the, the yolk broke a little bit, but hey, what do you think? You think that's, that's great? Let me come over here, hold on, let me grab. Um, looks yummy, Judy said. Thank you so much, Judy. Okay, let's come back. Okay, so um, it is yummy. So glad you guys like it. This pan is hot. That's it. I thank you so much for joining today. I want to show you these lemon ricotta cookies one more time. I made them for a dear friend last night. Let's see if we can get these on camera for you. They're lemon ricotta cookies. They're a Giada recipe, so just type in lemon ricotta cookies in the Food Network app. Um, or maybe even on Google and Giada's name. And uh, I filed the recipe to a T, and it was amazing. Um, and Georgia just said, Georgia, you're reading my mind. Mistakes are just ways to try things in a new way, and it's a way to learn lessons. Because I always used to say to my children, you know, if you don't make two or three mistakes every day of your life, you're not growing and you're not learning. And life is about growing, life is about learning, life is about giving, and life is about sharing. And what better way to share than with the food that passes through your kitchen that you put love into. And so I always say, spread love like butter. So on the count of three, say it with me, one, two, three. Go out and spread love like butter. But uh, love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I had such a great time today because I wasn't anxious about my equipment failing on me. So David Lerner, from the most deepest part of my heart and my soul, wherever that is within my body, it is um, flying right now with joy because um, it's all finally working. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day, and I will see you probably on Friday. Okay, bye, everybody.